So for those of you who have not been to one of my courses, my name is Bethan. I am one of the practitioners at Valley Steps. And I thought I'd do a little bit of a video today on caffeine. It's actually really weird filming these videos. I feel a little bit like I should be like a YouTube sensation or something like that. Maybe I will be after this, who knows. Um, so I thought I'd do a little bit of a video on caffeine. Those of you who've been to our stress control course, you will know that we do talk a little bit about caffeine. Actually, I talk about caffeine quite a lot. Uh, but we do talk about caffeine a little bit because caffeine actually mimics a lot of the symptoms of stress, particularly anxiety. So a lot of people find a benefit when they're dealing with stress in trying to be a bit mindful of how much caffeine they're putting into their body. So we might be finding uh, that while we're at home a lot at the moment because of the coronavirus situation, we might be finding that we are putting the kettle on a lot more than usual just for something to do. So we're making a cup of tea or coffee just to keep ourselves busy. So we might actually be finding that when we're at home, we're drinking more than maybe we normally would when we're out and about during the day. So it's really worth thinking about caffeine while we're all stuck at home and we're trying to do our best to manage our well-being. Making sure we're not having too much of that caffeine would be helpful. So bear in mind that a healthy human adult shouldn't have much more than about 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. Actually people with stress will find they probably can consume a lot less than that before they start experiencing those stress symptoms. To put that 400 milligrams into perspective, most supermarket brand instant coffees contain about 80 milligrams. Obviously, it depends what brand you're buying, depends how strong it is, but it's about 80 milligrams. Some cold and flu medications and paracetamol and things like that will also contain caffeine. So it's worth being mindful of that when you're taking those medications if you're needing them at the moment. It's worth bearing in mind that actually there could be quite a lot of caffeine in those. So maybe making sure that we're not drinking a lot more coffee or tea on top of that could also be really helpful. Bearing in mind that there's not just caffeine in tea and coffee and those over-the-counter flu medications, uh, cold and flu medications or painkillers. There's actually caffeine in things like fizzy drinks. Some colas, for example, will contain caffeine. There's caffeine in energy drinks and energy tablets. There's some caffeine in chocolate, although it is a very small amount. White chocolate doesn't have any. Milk chocolate has a little bit. Dark chocolate contains the most. But honestly, with dark chocolate, even you'd still need to eat a bar up this big before it gets to your coffee. I mean, to be honest, while I'm isolated at home, this is probably the size of the bar that I am eating. But um, it's that it's 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 a huge bar to get anywhere near a coffee and that is with dark chocolate so the darker the chocolate the more caffeine it will contain for you basically this is the first time you're hearing this information you haven't done our stress control course maybe keep it a bit of a diary over the next couple of weeks if you're not sure how much caffeine might be affecting you maybe just keep a diary over the next two weeks say write down every day how many milligrams of caffeine you have and then write down any of the physical symptoms that you experience. So it's worth thinking about them, some of those things. Like I said, while we're all stuck at home and we're trying to find those small ways to manage our well-being, maybe when we're not able to get outside and, and go out and, and live our sort of normal lives, it is definitely worth thinking about these little things that we can do. Like I said, maybe switch a couple of your coffees or your teas for some decaf, maybe get some herbal teas if you're able to get hold of them, uh, maybe making sure that we're not eating that whole bar of chocolate as a way of you know replacing that that caffeine uh, and making sure that when we're taking these cold and flu medications we're just mindful of the fact that they might contain that caffeine and again maybe we're replacing a coffee later on in the day uh, so maybe comment below this video maybe let me know what you think about caffeine how much does it affect you do you consume very much caffeine or have you already cut it down? Uh, just comment below, let's have a discussion. While we're not able to do our courses, it'd be great if everybody could engage on our Facebook a little bit more and we can all maybe help each other through what is quite a difficult time. So thank you very much everyone and look out for our next video update hopefully tomorrow. Mm -hmm.